for the program, Robert Coleman. This week, we have an excellent presentation by Steve Burgess. Steve uh, did a presentation for us a few months ago, and he spent a little bit of time talking about responsive web design in that program, and it's a sufficiently important topic, and I thought it would be enough interest to devote an entire segment to it. So Steve was generously willing to do a second presentation for us. So I'd like to welcome now Steve Burgess, who is a principal of Global Marketing Resources. Steve, welcome. You have the floor. Steve, are you muted? Let's, um, I, um, Irvine, Steve is the 714 number. I think you have him muted. There we go. All right. Steve, you, you got it? Yep. Fantastic. Well, again, uh, thank you, Robert, for uh, having me back. And it's a real pleasure uh, to be um, doing this uh, webinar and working with the Irvine Chamber as well. So um, it's a great topic and one that I think is very appropriate for uh, today's environment. I think uh, all the attendees will hopefully get some great value out of it. The Why it's important to understand this particular kind of web design, if you will. So we, we titled it very simply, What the Heck is Responsive Web Design? And more importantly, how will it affect you and affect your future website designs and even your future marketing? Because it actually will affect your marketing. And we'll get into that in detail as to why it's so important to understand what responsive web design is and a variety of things about the details about it, even what it looks like. And I'm going to show you some things to show you what responsive design looks like versus a traditional website design, and even explain some of those differences as well in more detail. So, um, let's get into, you know, why do we even care? <laughs> so um, we know that there's a ton of people out there on the Internet. I don't think it's any surprise to anybody that most of America is on the Internet. I think what's surprising, and I've used this statistic before because it's still current, there's over 100 billion global searches each month this year, uh, the number of searches on smartphones, doesn't matter if it's Android or iPhones, etc., will exceed all searches on both PCs and pads combined. So the number of searches going towards smartphones is accelerating, and I'll have some more data for you later, and, and, and that leads right into our discussion about this particular design topic. Um, a couple other quick statistics you can see there. You know, search is number one driver of traffic. So all those searches that are being done even on smartphones are driving traffic to appropriate sites, and that's what's driving those sites um, to get new customers in many cases and drive their revenues, whether they're a service business, an e-commerce business, or otherwise. And 93% uh, of the online experiences begin with a search engine. I don't think anybody will be surprised by that. Uh, and that most of the Internet traffic is generated through search engines. So search engines being your Google, your Bing, uh, your Yahoo. Um, just a quick note on that for those that don't know, Google represents about, uh, in the U.S. market, forget the worldwide market, the U.S. market about 80% of the searches. Bing is somewhere in the 14 15% range, depending on whose numbers you take, maybe a hair higher, maybe as high as 18. Uh, Yahoo is running around 3% roughly, and everybody else combined is less than 1%. So um, what we see with, with clients that we do search engine marketing for is that about 90% of their traffic is Google search. So uh, Google is still the big uh, gorilla, if you will, and, uh, and it's important that uh, uh, from a standpoint of understanding the Internet and marketing and even this, this website design that Google is the big, the big horse, if you will. So here's why we actually care about this specific kind of design, this so-called responsive web design. It's often called RWD um, for short, and that's obviously just the acronym, the initials of the three words. Um, Google has officially endorsed responsive web design as their preferred method for building mobile websites or mobile-friendly websites is probably a better way to put it, not just mobile sites, but mobile-friendly sites. It's also been stated specifically by Google, they've actually announced that it is their preferred platform for the next five to 10 years. And I'll explain why more and more that, that will be true. So 
uh, maintaining a, you know, a separate mobile-friendly or tablet-friendly website can be detrimental. What does that mean? So a year ago, when responsive de uh, website design was first announced and released, which was uh, you know, late summer into early fall of last year, almost exactly a year ago, or just a hair over a year ago, um, the way you would show your website um, to format automatically to a mobile device, a smartphone, would be you would create a separate website called a dot mobile or mobile uh, website. It was a dot, you know, literally the name of your site instead of dot com. It would be dot mobile or M O B I, and that site would be tied to your regular site. And in turn, when somebody came to your site, if they were on a mobile device, the mobile version of that site would show. And if you wanted it to also show on a tablet at that time, you'd have to create a tablet-friendly website. In essence, you are creating three websites regular website, a mobile site, and a tablet site, so that it would, you, every, any device coming to your website could see the, the site in a format that fit the device. Well, that's now passe, believe it or not. So um, what's happened is, over time with this change, is that Google now considers separate websites as duplicates. Um, this is important because duplicates um, actually negatively affect your rankings. Um, Google will only rank one of three sites. So if you still had a regular site, a mobile site, and a, uh, a pad or tablet site, um, they would actually not rank two of those sites, and they would downgrade, in many cases, your main site uh, in your rankings because they don't like duplicate sites. So they've openly come out and said, we don't like duplicates of any kind. Even if you're using different domains, if you're using the same content, that's considered a duplicate website. In this case, what was the prior solution is now actually detrimental. So, and I mention that because even in our business, we have several e-commerce sites separate from our normal business that we operate, and we had to get rid of, if you will, our previous mobile, uh, or mobile, and uh, also tablet-friendly websites, and basically build them in this responsive design. So, Google and actually others, Bing is following, uh, and they're the number two search engine. Uh, they consider your, your website is behind the times if you're not uh, up to date in technology, and this is the latest web design technology. So it's not that you're totally unworthy of search engine rankings. Clearly, there's old design sites that are highly ranked for a variety of reasons. But the point being that Google has now got quite a few algorithms that are related to technology. They didn't have these a couple of years ago. Um, they used other factors, and they've continued to add more factors um, to what they consider important for search engine rankings. And that's why it's important you understand about responsive design. So they actually, as an example, besides the type of design you have, Google no longer likes um, template websites. Template websites are those that you, what I call rent-a-sites, where you might go to uh, a company online, uh, whether it's a GoDaddy or a one-on-one -one, like you see on TV or some of those, and buy a site which you basically are paying a monthly payment for. You're kind of renting the site. When you quit making the payments, the site goes away. So they've downgraded those so-called template sites because they know that they're not as well built and not as well structured as a custom site. They also now measure things like page load speeds right down to the tenth of a second. If your site doesn't load fast enough, they actually will downgrade you a little bit. It's just a factor, one of many, but it is a factor. Um, they also consider the internal structure of the site and a variety of other things. And that comes into why is responsive web design so important? Because they consider it the best platform going forward. So if you're designed in that platform, um, you have an edge over your competition. It's really that simple. Um, not only is it fast, um, it's also very responsive. It fits the future as well as the current needs of consumers, which is what Google looks at. Since consumers are moving towards mobile devices so heavily and search is accelerating in the mobile platform so fast, they consider that very important to consumers and therefore very important to the design of your site. So uh, some people say to me, well, but does that apply to everybody? The answer is generally no. It doesn't apply to everybody. If you have what I call a business card on the web or a website that you just want to be able to send your particular customers or people to, uh, to view and to learn more about you, not a problem. But if you are doing any kind of e-commerce, you absolutely should have a responsive web design. There's not even a question. 100% you need responsive web design because it will increase your business. It's just that simple. So and there's plenty of studies already out showing that responsive designs 
get more customers and do more business than non-responsive designs for the same products or services. So if you're going to market on the Internet, actively market, try to get rankings or do pay-per-click campaigns, also called AdWords, uh, do e-commerce on the web, etc. Responsive web design is critical. So I wanted to spend a little time on this because I make to make sure everybody understands how important responsive design is becoming and really is today. Um, I can tell you that most large e-commerce businesses on the web today are built in responsive design, and I'll give you how they're built in just a, in just a few minutes. Uh, actually, comes a, a, the structure, if you will, of responsive design sites. So those are the key points on this particular area. A couple more compelling pieces of information. I kind of mentioned this, but this will kind of uh, maybe even shock you into more belief. So uh, 1.2 billion mobile and tablet web users around the world with annual growth at about 25%. It is estimated that somewhere around 30 to 40% of the world will be um, on the Internet in the next year or two. Um, so there will be that many more devices, the most common device being bought today to access the web is number one, smartphones, mobile phones, and number two, tablets. So fewer and fewer laptops and desktops. And just if you want to really prove that point, especially with the younger generation, go to any major university campus. Go to University of California, Irvine, or Chapman University, anywhere around here, UCLA, USC, because um, I've, I've spoken to a number of these universities, and look what people are carrying around. And you'll see that going into classrooms and forth, most students have smartphones with them, and a few have pads, and you'll almost never see a laptop or desktop uh, kind of computer. They may have one in their particular either dorm room or, uh, you know, if they're in a fraternity or sorority, whatever, wherever they're staying, but they only use that for major projects, and they'll tell you that's what I use my phone for everything else. I, I use it when I go to search things, et cetera. Uh, it's the number one device. So younger generations especially, it is becoming the absolute mode of, of operation. Here's the second key point. Mobile traffic itself is expected to increase 25-fold the current levels, and it's already exceeding all their searches, by 2015. So in less than two years, we're going to have 25 times the traffic through mobile traffic that we have today. That means it, it is explosively growing. It is so easy to search that more and more people look for everything through, through their most common search device, and in this case, Smartphones are one of the most common search devices and are the most, will be the most very, very shortly. Even though they've exceeded um, overall, they're more than half the searches today, um, that number is going to grow so fast that they will far exceed all other devices by a very large percentage very soon. So that's why it's very, very important to understand how, why you would want to consider um, understanding and having a responsive design site. Okay, so what really is it? Let's answer the real question, what the heck is responsive design? So here's really a simple definition that I think best encapsulates what responsive web design is. It's the latest web design techniques to automatically provide an optimal viewing experience across all devices. In essence, it's a smart website. The website automatically recognizes the device coming to it, doesn't matter if it's an Android phone, iPhone, iPad, Windows tablet, laptop, desktop, it doesn't matter what the device is. It automatically formats the site to fit the device. And, and that's really critical to understand because one of the things I think most of you have seen is that the technologies are starting to cross over. Tablets are getting, have gotten smaller. Phone screens have gotten larger. Um, I just saw a smartphone the other day. This conference is being recorded. So, so <clears throat> I just saw a smartphone the other day. That had, that had a six-inch six inch screen, screen on, it. on it. I'm getting a little getting echo. A little echo. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're not, you're not the echo I'm getting. getting. <laughs> um, Victor, um, can you can check, check into this, into please? This group. Sounds, Sounds like we've, like got, we've someone got someone with a loud uh, uh, speaker. speaker. Hopefully, hopefully uh, we yeah, got we got the correct, we'll get that corrected here. Great. So. Um, back to where I was. So the the importance um, is is the fact that these devices are going so many different sizes. Tablets today come in probably five different sizes, um, all the way down to seven inches. Now you have a six-inch smartphone, so there's only one-inch difference. Um, 
that's going to continue to happen. People are taking pictures off their smaller tablets, uh, taking video just like they would off their smartphones. Um, you'll soon, if you can already, on your particular tablet, be able to make phone calls from it. It's, they're emerging technologies. So people like a little bit bigger screen. That's obviously why smartphones are getting bigger screens, because uh, it's a little easier to view. But more importantly, they like the way things look when they're in responsive design versus standard. Now, for those who want the technical side of what responsive design is, it is really just a combination of two things. It's what we call CSS3, uh, which has to do with style sheets, as we will, or page formats, and HTML5. That is really what responsive design is. The latest version of HTML, which is 5, with the latest version of CSS, which is 3, it's a combination of those. Also keep in mind there are often, very often today, other languages being used for specific functions within a site. And these do vary depending on the site and the needs and the requirements of the site. So there rarely is a site anymore that has a single language, if you will, in it. So just so you understand that a little bit more, uh, a language, you know, when we talk languages we speak, it's, you know, we're speaking English, but obviously we could be speaking French and German and Chinese and so forth. In a sense, it's not much different when designing websites. Websites have different languages. One of the most popular languages is one that's called PHP, which is just a programming language, a freeware, as we call it, based language that a lot of programmers like because it is freeware. Um, ASP is another language, which is kind of Microsoft's language, which is used for many of the largest websites in the world. So if you go to Amazon and uh, many other sites, you'll see they're built, if you want to know, they're built basically in ASP. But they use other languages in parts to solve certain particular functional issues. So. Responsive design is the same sense, but it has a core of CSS3 and HTML5. This is important uh, only for one purpose for you to understand. If your site's built in PHP, you're not going to convert it over to a responsive design through a conversion technique. It's going to have to be rebuilt. So a lot of people ask me that question. It's one question I wanted to say is, you know, can I convert? No, you can't convert at this point. You can only rebuild. The second thing that happens a lot is people ask me if, if uh, real sophisticated templates like WordPress have responsive design. And the answer is they do have some templates you can buy that are built in responsive design in WordPress now. They're the one that has it that I've seen that actually has some good ones. Um, you have to pay for them, but they're not very expensive, quite honestly, it's usually under $100. However, here's the caution to all of you. Be very careful when buying anything that's built kind of pre-built that says it's responsive because unfortunately some of the developers out there call sites that are responsive, they mean responsive to search engines or other things. They're not really responsive designs that are responsive to devices. So you have to be very careful as a buyer when you go out there, make sure that it's specifically stating that the site will display on various tablets, laptops, and of course smartphones. So that's a very, very good thing to know, a very good caution, if you will, to be uh, aware of. So uh, I think a lot of people know this particular thing, but uh, you may not. Most consumers uh, spend a lot of time on the Internet. One-third, that's one-third of our country, spends three hours or more online every day. Uh, some of that could be work-related, obviously not all just personally related. Um, I certainly spend a lot of time, but it's my business. I probably do spend three hours a day on the Internet um, in some way, shape, or form but uh, the other one is that page views per month. So there's just a tremendous amount of activity on the Internet. With smartphones, that's just accelerating, which brings us back to why it's so important. Okay, so what does it look like? <laughs> Here's an example. Uh, this is actually the Boston Globe. Most people have heard of this uh, famous newspaper back east. This is uh, just a few days old. So you get a desktop or laptop, you get the view on the left side. You can uh, kind of It's truncated a little bit just to fit it in on the picture here, but you can see across the screen, you can see there was a Red Sox game being played. They had the score live score up there at the top a few days ago when they were uh, one of the playoff games in the picture. Uh, and then they had you know a column below it, a column alongside, and some more news on the right. Now you look at the mobile view, and you see some of the same information, but you quickly realize that there's nothing left or right. Everything is vertical, if you will. So you actually scroll down to see the other articles and so forth, but you still see the lead article. Democrats to you know, offer brief extension is the same articles you see in the center of the page on the, uh, the main desktop or laptop view. Um, and then the following article. But you don't see the picture. You don't see some of the things to the left or the right. 
you can see some of those as you go down the page, so to speak. You just literally flip the page like you, you would on any mobile phone with your finger. Um, you know, flip it up. You go down further, scroll down, you can see other things. And you can click on any of those things just like you click on the main site. But you don't see a, also a navigation bar. You notice that the navigation bar that's going across the top under Boston Globe on the main view is no longer there. Everything is down below um, in a different order, and it's all verticalized, if you will. A tablet's kind of a hybrid. Depending on the size of the tablet, you may see the entire screen, just like you do on a laptop view, or you may see basically about two-thirds of the screen, but not all of the screen. And it will be uh, squeezed a little bit tighter, obviously. So it depends on the size, and that's the great thing about responsive design. It's recognizing the device and automatically formatting the site to fit the device, and it does it so instantaneously that there's no lag time, there's no delay. If you go on your smartphone, you can see quickly that these things are just as fast as if they were a single site. Um, very, very, very fast in response, which is very critical because Google does measure that, as I mentioned before. So this is a great view of what a real responsive design looks like. And I'm going to show you a couple of layers in different businesses, if you will, so you get an idea of some of the different ways sites can look in a responsive design format. So this is Grey Goose. This is the vodka company. So if you go to the main site, you get this picture of these birds flying and this you know, fly beyond thing and so forth, and, and then some other uh, options on the right-hand side, as you can see, and navigation below. Again, when you look to the mobile view, which this time is on the left, you see the fly beyond, and you can actually click and see the little video that pops up and so forth. But immediately, you actually see some different things below that, which in the main view on a laptop, you can't see. Because they, again, it's been verticalized. And so there's another section that reads, and you scroll downwards again to see that. Um, and again, you can get to some other of these other um, areas of the website, but you have to get to them by going down vertically versus seeing it in width, if you will, in the regular laptop view. So it's, you can do a variety of different things with, with these. They do look a little different depending on what you're doing. This is uh, actually one of uh, those two companies are obviously very large ones. This is a national company. We actually built this site. This is called Cinderella Hair. And again, what you see is we've taken the navigation and made it vertical. So what you see is classic and eye hair and T hair. This is a company that um, uh, uh, provides um, extension hairs and, and wigs and those kinds of things uh, throughout the country to um, salons all over the all over the country uh, in every state. So. What we've done is, is we've converted it so that you can still navigate the various types of hair, so to speak. Um, you can still do a contact, and so forth, but you can see how verticalized it is. There's no, um, you know, if you will, horizontal uh, orientation to it because it has to fit the screen. And if you go down, you can even get to further information on that mobile view that you can't get on the desktop or laptop view. So it's just a different format to fit what you want. Now, if you can imagine, if you're a restaurant. Um, this is really critical because the rest get searched on mobile phones probably more than any other uh, single business today. Um, it's critical that they have a way to view their business uh, for their consumer. What the initial research has already shown, there's been some studies already done, even though this is a fairly new technology, is that consumers, when they get to a mobile view, if you will, a responsive site, convert at a much, much higher level than if they see the regular site on the mobile view. So you can imagine most of us have all done this. When you pull up a regular site that it doesn't have responsive design, just like it looks like the left-hand side, the problem is you can only see a very small portion of it. And so you have to scroll left and right to see what's there as well as up and down. And it's very hard to navigate um, because in many cases you can see just maybe a quarter of the site on your screen because that's basically the size of your screen. It's not formatted to fit. So, and it's not a to fit to the device. So it becomes very hard to do. And Consumers are finding that out, so they are finding that if they go to two sites and one has a responsive design view and one does not, they convert at a, an extremely higher level on the responsive design side. Ultimately, what it's about is conversions, and responsive design increases conversions. If you're doing e-commerce or doing anything where you're marketing your website, whether it's services or products, so that's why it's so important to understand. And this is a great example. They're doing a tremendous uh, amount of business. Um, through their, uh, even through their mobile things. Here's, here's an interesting point, by the way. You can track, um, if, the, if the site's set up right, because we actually market this company as well, but if you set it up right, you can track 
not only you know where it's coming from on, from your analytics standpoint from your website, but you can tell it's coming from mobile pads or from regular de desktops, and you can even tell if it's coming from social media. So you can actually track if you're in that business of e-commerce or you're in something where you want to track where your customers are coming from. I can tell you, you can track no matter where they're coming from the source um, if it's set up correctly and built into your site properly. You can get all that information um, about where your customers are actually coming from. And we're also finding that because of responsive design, many clients are getting a tremendous amount of social media leads and or business where people are coming to a Facebook page and actually going into an immediate product offer from the Facebook page.